Lesson 5.10 is writing equations using the unit rate. We're in your notes packet on pages 19 and 20. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a real world scenario. We're going to first figure out our unit rate, which we've also learned has been called K, our constant of proportionality. We're going to write our equation Y equals KX. We'll swap out the variables for the ones that are listed in the problem. And then we'll also talk about the dependent and independent variables here. So following these steps, Olivia bought six containers of yogurt for $7.68. Write an equation relating the cost C to the number of yogurts Y. So <clears throat> we are going to start off with calculating our unit rate. Because there's money here, the money is going to come first. So we're going to do $7.68 for six containers of yogurt. So $7.68 divided by six containers gives us $1.28 per container. This is our K value. And remember, we get K by doing Y divided by X. So our equation is Y equals 1.28X. Y represents our money, which here is actually C. And X represents our yogurts, which here we're going to represent with Y. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap out variables. Instead of the y in our original equation, we're going to swap that with the letter c. The 1.28 stays, and the x is now going to become y to represent the yogurt's y from the problem. So our cost is equal to $1.28 times the number of yogurts we buy, which is the independent variable, the one that we can control. So we control the number of yogurts that we buy. The price depends on which one, on how many we actually buy. So the price is dependent. The independent variable is the number of yogurts. The price depends on this. So the last part here, we're going to use our equation. How much would Olivia pay for 10 yogurts at the same rate? So our cost is equal to $1.28 times the number of yogurts we buy. Olivia is going to buy 10 yogurts, so we're going to do $1.28 times 10, so our cost is going to be $12.80 by multiplying those two numbers together. For number two, and I apologize, this one kind of goes over onto the next page, so we're going to have to, you're going to have to flip back and forth just a little bit or just keep looking at the screen here. JC bought eight gallons of gas for $31.12. We're going to do our cost C to the gallons G. So our unit rate, we're going to start off with money first, 31.12 for 8 gallons. So 31.12 divided by 8 will give you 3.89. So your unit rate is K. So your equation, Y equals K, which is 3.89X. Keeping in mind, when we did this before, we were doing y divided by x. That's how we got our k. y is our money, which is our cost. And gx is our gallons, which is actually going to turn to g. So we're going to swap out the variables. In place of y, we're going to put c for cost. And in place of x, we're going to put g for gallons. So which one is independent? The one that you can control. We can determine how many gallons we fill, and the money depends on how many gallons we purchase. So now we're going to use the equation. Cost equals 3.89G. How much would JC pay for 11 gallons at the same rate? So cost is equal to 3.89 times 11. So your cost is going to be equal to $42.00 and 79 cents for this. Number three, Riley typed six paragraphs in four minutes. So we're going to do six paragraphs in four minutes. Paragraphs per minute. Six divided by four is going to give me 1.5. So that's my K value. Y equals 1.5X. Paragraphs is a P, which this was also our Y divided by X. And the minutes is M, which is represented by our X initially. So we're going to swap out our variables. Instead of Y, we have paragraphs. And instead of X, we have M for minutes. So which one is the independent variable? We have paragraphs per 
minute. So our paragraphs depend on how many minutes we have. So the minutes is our independent variable and our paragraphs is dependent. We're going to use our equation here. Paragraphs is equal to 1.5 times m. How long would it take her to type 10 paragraphs? 10 is going to go in place of the p here, which is different than our other equations that we've seen so far in this lesson. We're going to have to divide by 1.5 to get our answer here. And when we do that, we get a really yucky decimal that repeats itself. So we have 6 and 2 thirds is equal to m. So we have 6 and 2 thirds. m represents time. So this would be minutes. If we really wanted to, 2 thirds of a minute is actually 40 seconds. So we could say it would take her 6 minutes and 40 seconds to be able to type this out. That's it for your lesson. Make sure that you follow those steps when you go to swap out your variables.